Welcome to the last video of section 5.5. So we've seen how to write a linear system as a matrix equation, AX equals B. And back in section, uh, actually it says 4.2, but this should be 5.2. You can correct it in your notes. So we saw back in section 5.2 that when A is invertible, we can solve the matrix equation by multiplying both sides by A inverse, right? So that's the step here. So we start with AX equals B. We multiply both sides by A inverse and we end up with x equals a inverse times b. And that hinges on a being invertible. So let's apply that approach to the following example. Uh, so we're given a linear system, and we're asked, first of all, to rewrite it as a matrix equation, and then to use a inverse to find the general solution. So let's start with the matrix equation. So the matrix equation means we need to write the coefficient matrix. There it is. The matrix of unknowns, so x and y. And the matrix of constants, 2, 4, and these have names, so this is A, this is capital X, and capital B. And so that's the linear system in the form of a matrix equation. Since we're going to need A inverse, let's start with finding A inverse. So finding A inverse, we know the formula for a 2 by 2, so 1 over A times D minus 1 minus C times uh, B times C minus 2. And then we interchange these, and we put minuses in front of these positions. So that gives us minus one-third times matrix, minus one, minus one, minus two, one. And I think I've shown you this before. In this case, I'm not going to multiply in the one-third, because I want to avoid having to multiply fractions. You can multiply in the minus one if you like, one-third, one, one, two, negative one. And I'm going to, for the time being, going to leave A inverse uh, in that form. Sorry, that was A inverse. And over here, I'm going to solve for x right? But I'm solving for x in the matrix equation. So the matrix equation is ax equals b. I'm going to leave a little room here because you can see what I'm going to do next, right? I'm going to multiply both sides by a inverse. And since this is i, then this will give me x equals a inverse times b. And I'm now ready to use a inverse. So that was one third times matrix 1, 1, 2, minus 1 times matrix b, 2, 4, and so you can see why I left the one-third outside, so that I can do the matrix multiplication first. So 2 by 2 times a 2 by 1, we'll give a 2 by 1. So 2 plus 4, 6, and 4 minus 4, 0. And now I'll multiply in the one-third, and I have 2, 0. And that is the unique solution. Uh, actually, I don't need, don't need this arrow. That's the unique solution of the linear system. And I'm going to write it down here as solution. It's the solution of the linear system, so I do want to write each variable x, y, like this. But you can use the vector form, and so in vector form, this is what that solution looks like. And that's the end of this exercise. Uh, just a couple of remarks. You notice that uh, in the above method, uh, we use x equals a inverse times b to find the solution. And of course, this means that the system has exactly one solution, or a unique solution. And so whenever we're able to use this method of using a inverse to solve the linear system, it means we're going to end up with one solution, right? And in particular, when the system is homogeneous, which means that the b here, the matrix of constants, is the zero matrix, then what is that unique solution? Well, it's written right here, a inverse times the zero matrix will be the zero matrix. And so that is what we if you recall, called the trivial solution. So if A is invertible and you're solving a system AX equals zero, using A inverse, then you will have only the trivial solution. So uh, for example, if we rewrite the above system, but as a homogeneous system, so uh, the matrix was one, one, two, minus one. So if I have X plus Y equals zero and two X minus Y equals zero, well then this is going to give the matrix equation 1, 1, 2, minus 1, x, x, y, equals 0, 0, the zero matrix. And we know that since A is invertible, since A inverse exists, which is the same thing, then the, the unique solution will be x, y, equals 0, 0. In other words, only the trivial solution, right? Because when we isolate x, we're going to be multiplying A inverse times 0 and obtaining the zero matrix.